All right, here's a question I bet you have. What happens if Ukraine loses its war with Russia? Yesterday, I spoke with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. His answer is alarming. What makes him so confident? History. You know, people think in the United States that this war started in February of 22, but it really does go back to 2014 in Crimea. Did the world sort of look the other way as Russia was uh, annexing Crimea? Yes, the world allowed uh, Russia to make this kind of crippling aggression that turned into a full-scale war. Nobody was willing to turn Putin into a personal enemy, and Ukraine was paying for that. If Ukraine will not uh, hold its grounds, then Putin will really want to occupy all the countries where there was influence of the USSR. After World War II, Hungary was under Soviet occupation for decades, and Hungary shares Ukraine's western border. Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Seattle joins me. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you so much for your kind invitation. Nice to have you here in the United States. Um, I want to talk about the United Nations. Please. Can, does the United Nations, does it have any role or power or ability or anything to help resolve this war between Ukraine and Russia? And if so, what can it do? Well, it should. It should, because uh, the United Nations has not been established to be an organization of like-minded countries. The United Nations has been established uh, to serve as a platform for those who cannot talk to each other otherwise than just in, on a neutral uh, territory. It should uh, be a, a platform for those who talk to each other who are in a bad relationship, who are being in conflict, who are having given a war. So, therefore, I do believe that the, the United Nations should be used for a platform where Ukraine, Russia, United States could talk to each other how to resolve this situation. But unfortunately, what I see is that the world is going towards being divided into blocks again. And this is a very bad news so, to us. So, uh, so who's, to, who's responsible for this failure? I mean, if, I mean, if it's supposed to be a platform where people with grave disagreements can, can sit and yeah, talk at right. least, and it's not happening, instead of it's becoming very divided and people are taking sides, I mean, who, who should we look to to get rid of or replace or to do something to? Well, um, we Hungarians, we Hungarians are a small country. So here we are not going to be the game changer. But... We still do believe that the channels of communication must be open. And we say that, we do that. So I am still in contact with the Be Foreign Minister of Belarus. I'm still in contact with Foreign Minister of Russia. I will meet uh, Sergei Lavrov tomorrow. My question is why the German, why the French, why the American foreign ministers do not do so. The European Parliament, imagine, European Parliament has passed a resolution bashing me for my visit in Minsk. But why I went to Minsk was to ask the Belarusians not to make any decision which would contribute to the escalation of the war, either in time or geography. So I hope, I wish, that uh, Sergei Lavrov, Antony Blinken, Annalena Baerbock and others meet in the framework of United Nations to discuss what should be done in order to stop this war finally, which is going on in our neighborhood. Well, it doesn't help that no show is on part of you know, people like UK, France, India, I think Germany, China, Russia, they were no shows anyway. So they're not going to be, you know, at least their leaders were no shows. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, the countries that you name, um, Belarus, uh, Russia, you talked to, are you talking to anyone sort of on the other side of it, this dispute, like um, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's foreign minister or the UK's foreign minister? I mean, it seems like you, you talk to the ones that are sort mm. of on this side of the ledger. And in order to have this robust debate, you've got to talk to people on the other side. Sure, Rob, obviously you are totally right. Uh, since the European foreign ministers meet uh, once every month, we have the chance to talk to each other on a uh, regular uh, basis. But I do believe that we should talk to those who are outside of European Union as well. Of course, with the Ukrainians, we have a continuous contact since we are neighbors uh, to each other. We in Hungary have been carrying out the largest humanitarian operation ever of the history, in the history of our country. We received more than a million refugees from Ukraine. Currently, there are more than 5,000 kids, Ukrainians, who are being enrolled in Hungarian schools and kindergartens. Well, we are, 
Yeah. You, but if your foreign ministers are talking, why aren't your why aren't the leaders? I really, I mean, like, why why aren't you know? Let, let's put Putin and Zelensky on the table. I mean, like, if this is sort of the the place where people should talk who have deep uh, seated differences, yeah. but they're not even here. I mean, yeah. well, Zelensky was well, here, but uh, President Zelensky was here. Unfortunately, the others uh, have not uh, uh, shown up. But at least it would be great to start it on the level of the of the foreign ministers because we foreign ministers are getting our salaries to be in touch with even does, those whom we don't like. But isn't it so sort of disappointing? That the leaders are not that we didn't we didn't have the prime minister of, of England here we didn't have the French president yeah, it's here. A disappointment, I mean, it's, for sure. it's a huge disappointment. It is, and the UN has allowed itself to become blocks of, of taking sides, not as yeah. a not as a setting a table for a robust debate. Not to mention we paid 12.5 billion dollars to support yeah. it. If we got a product, I, I wouldn't be grousing about it. No, I, I totally uh, agree with you that uh, that it is a very bad news that the world is going towards being divided into blocks again. You. You said that we were under Soviet occupation for 40 years. Imagine, for 40 years. We gained back our freedom in 1990. So whenever the world is being divided into blocks, we Central Europeans are losers. And we don't want to be losers again. So we, we want the world to go towards connectivity instead of being divided into blocks. Now, if you want to create connectivity, you have to talk. You need discussion. You need dialogue. And, and, and it's not there, unfortunately. All right, well, I'm rooting now for foreign ministers because I've given up on the leaders. So yeah. I'm going to look to you. I hope you, I hope you can get everybody talking. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, sir, for joining me. Thank you so much for having me.